Next question. I drink lots of water. Given the ubiquity of glyphosate and microplastics, I guess I ingest them proportionally. Thoughts? Other examples when apparently healthy action might be harmful? Mm. Yeah, we are. We cannot escape some of this at this point without um, leaving the modern world entirely. And even so, you know, the the scope of of a lot of what we've done is is global at this point. Um, they're they're I'm trying to think. I can't remember. I guess we inferred uh, that we thought that the visible insect die-off in the Amazon between the last time we were there in January 2020 and the previous time, which had been March 2016, I guess, something like that, so four years, um, was likely about uh, dispersed effects of like neonicotinoid, which I'm probably mispronouncing. Um, neonicotinoid. There's no M. Well, there is the way I say it. <laughs> no, you're right. Neonicotinoid. Uh, yeah. That's it. Um, insecticides that are not used there because there's no farming that happens anywhere close to the particular very deep in the Amazon, in the Ecuadorian Amazon place where we were, um, but that it's it's coming downstream uh, in the water and possibly even wafting due to- Yeah, I mean, it can't, it can't um, help. the Andes. Yep. I mean, you know, you got the Andes on the far western side of the Amazon basin. And the basic mm -hmm. point is there are people farming the Andes and the foothills right below them. Yep. And so basically anything that gets released up there ultimately works its way uh, into the Atlantic. And um, the question really is, a, you know, comparing the rate of how quickly it moves and how quickly it degrades to be biologically not harmful and the answer yeah. is unfortunately these things degrade too slowly right very much so um so yeah you know are you getting glyphosate and microplastics and you know estrogens and other bioactive molecules uh in your water if you live almost anywhere on earth but certainly in the weird world yep filters take care of some of that stuff uh, I don't remember at the moment. I have at various points looked to see, you know, where, where's filter technology in terms of getting rid of things. Of course, um, simply filtering everything out of your water is a little bit like uh, just, you know, clearing your gut by taking a bunch of antibiotics and then assuming that's fine. What you don't want is totally, you know, you, you don't want to drink water that's only made up of hydrogen and oxygen. It's not, it, it doesn't taste good and it's not good for you. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me give you an example of a place where I ponder over what the right model is um, that's similar to what, the one you're pondering. If I'm driving someplace, how empty does a highway have to be before I want the vent open, right? Mm. You know, your car, there's off-gassing of the materials that the car is made out of. That, de that decreases over time, but it is substantial. Fresh air is good for you. Um, so the question is, every car on the highway is putting out exhaust. We live in Oregon. We have very stringent uh, emissions requirements, which I think are fantastic. I have to tell you, we moved from the state of Washington where we didn't have them. And the number of times in Washington that you find yourself behind some vehicle spewing black smoke that you can't avoid is high. And it, it happens much less frequently here. So it's anyway. true, actually. I hadn't really known. It hadn't occurred to me to notice. You notice when you're behind those vehicles. Yeah. yeah. In Washington. In and Washington. You, know, you don't get it in California and you don't get it in Oregon. And it's worth yep. it. You mm -hmm. know, it's a place where government regulation makes a hell of a lot of sense, even if it's not particularly well implemented, mm -hmm. but, um, but it, it works. But anyway, the point is exhaust carries, uh, does harm. There are harms here, which I know haven't been well enough studied. Like, um, we motor oil is a refined version of a crude oil. That crude oil contains a huge range of organic compounds because basically what you've got is peat bogs from an ancient world that have broken down into every possible fragment of the molecules. So you get a, basically a slurry of carbon compounds. It's hugely, there's a huge variety in there. And so when you put oil in your car, some fraction of it gets burned up in the cylinders and comes out the tailpipe. We have catalytic converters to get uh, some of the worst offenders out of the exhaust. And the exhaust is pretty clean because we have engines that burn pretty clean. But the point is you do burn a certain amount of motor oil as you run your car. What is the effect of synthetic motor oil 
on people's respiratory health. Do we know? Has anybody even thought to ask the question? No. Right. And if we have asked the question, maybe we asked it a little bit, but I don't think what we've done is followed people for decades. The R&D on synthetic motor oil was guaranteed to be almost entirely, if not entirely, about its efficacy it's in the car. Technological, which yes. is great. Which we, you it would may, need to know that. Right, but, but it makes yeah. cars last longer, so yeah. it's a positive in many regards. But what is its effect on health as you burn it in your engine? I don't think we know. I, I'd be very I surprised yeah, if we don't. I have not done looking, but yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't know when you do get a burst of exhaust before you manage to find the vent button in the car you happen to be driving, right? The obvious right thing to do is to vent the car as quickly as you can. So sometimes I drive like a maniac and get around the person who's spit out that huge amount of smoke in front of me. Is that the reason? And then I hope it's not the only reason, but it is a reason. And then I will open the windows if I'm on a you know open stretch of road, and that's the obvious right thing to do. But okay, suppose you're not in that situation. Suppose you can't get around the person who's just belched smoke and it took you too long to find the vent button, and so you got smoke in the car and you're smelling the exhaust, um, and now you close the vent? What do you do? Yeah. Do you close the vent and is breathing shallowly better for you or are you holding what you got in your lung? I, it's a complex question and I don't know the answer to it. I, I, I have guesses here and there, but um, but you would think somebody would have run you through this logic once, just like they run you through the logic of you know, where the microbes might be that you would pick up that you would then wipe into your eyes that would cause you to get the flu or something. Mm -hmm. You would think somebody would have run you through, here's the hazard of exhaust and here's how you reduce that hazard to you based on these five scenarios or something. But Yeah. No, and the microbes question, like, okay, microbes from a kitchen floor, a bathroom floor, a toilet seat, a kitchen sink, a bathroom sink, a bed pillow. Yeah. You know, like these are very different environments. Yep. And they're going to have different communities, if you will. Yes. Of 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 bacteria and other microbes in them. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and I said flu, which is obviously a virus, which I don't know if we ever say viruses are microbes, but you know what I mean. Microscopic I think, pathogens. Yeah, I, think, I mean, isn't microbe exactly the sort of like, eh, it's tiny and it can hurt and it's it's single-celled sort of category. I mean, it's not a phylogenetic category. Right, but I'm, I'm thinking our detractors will... Will go after me for saying microbe when I mean virus because viruses aren't even single celled, and you know, you, you know what they'll do. Yeah. You know them. I do. You can count on them. <laughs> yes.